the show where there are no penalties, nothing is offside, and everything is fair game. This is The Gloves Are Off. What? Oh, wow. Wow, I wanted... wasn't in a spring. said, I care the camera's off. I'm here. Welcome to The Gloves Are Off. I'm your host, Jack Haskins. With us, as always, Brian Curran, head coach of the Lloydminster Bobcats. Brian, good to have you. Again? Again. I'm back. Back again. Now we got Dan here. This Dan. will be even better after you introduce him and all. Yeah, yeah Dan Nadeau, good. assistant coach of the Lloydminster Bobcats. Good to have you back on the show. Thanks for having me back on. All right. He's controversial, so there could be some. There could be, there's either going to be some <laughs> real good stuff today, or or it's just going to go like usual and like I'll like last to, week. I'll have to start something, and you know, <laughs> we'll go from there. Or good stuff. We're actually going to start this off on a, a kind of a somber note. Tragic loss of two young hockey players in Alberta gone way before their time. What kind of impact does this have on, you know, a relatively small hockey community? Well, I think for me, I w- I'm going to answer real quickly because Dan knows uh, one, the, the one kid, or coached against him anyway. Um, you know, tr- the loss of any young person is horrible no matter way, any way you look at it. This one in Canmore, unfortunately, I, I don't want to say what it was. I thought I heard it was an aneurysm. Uh, obviously, the accident in, in Edmonton with the AAA player that is just such an unlucky fluky that rarely happens I mean you know you get hit with pucks but to get hit like he did that's just uh, such an unfortunate thing and my prayers go to the family that's about all I have to say about it absolutely Dan yeah the the one in Edmonton hit a little harder than than the other ones just because I I did coach against the kids I know his coach and I know that uh, it was against my old club actually and and I know I've been dealing with those kids this week just trying to help them through a, a pretty tough time for them so no, it's uh, definitely a terrible, terrible thing, and uh, it's terrible for. Well, those it's families. just you know you you just you know it's youth. I mean, you you look at anyone young person who's who loves and is passionate about anything, but in our case, it's hockey, which we love, and so many high dreams and expectations of what they want to be and play in the National Hockey League, and to lose your dream in a, in a, a split second is is horrible. I w- I wouldn't even know what the parents would be feeling, and as I said before. Uh, you know, my condolences go out to them and wish the best. All right, we're going to move on to Penn State. This is one of the biggest stories to come out of the sports world this year. Former assistant coach of Penn State Nittany Lions Jerry Sandusky is now saying he's innocent of the child sex abuse charges. Legendary head coach Joe Paterno got fired for not doing enough to kind of make this problem go away or, or bring it to the attention of the people that he should have. Now, how much of an impact is this going to have on Penn State as a football program and just as a university as a whole? This has got to be devastating. Well, I think, you know, my bigger question is, is how long they've known about this since 2002, I believe. Yes. And how long have they prepared for this? Because I saw Sandowski on, uh, uh, on with Bob Costas last night, well, the interview over by phone, and he's categorically denying most of the allegations. But he said if he had one big thing, it was the showering with the boys. Um, yeah. it, it makes you just sick. I mean, I don't know about you, but I'm sick inside my stomach talking about a grown man around 10-year-old boys. And even, the, even that he acknowledges the fact that he sent a wrong message. You sick, twisted freak. I mean, you, you know what they did? Uh, you know, the, the, the Joe was, uh, and I've loved watching him as living in the States for 25 years. What a great coach. And yeah. unfortunately for him and his family. And this type thing, the impact on Penn State, it wasn't too uh, as sick and twisted as this is and yes he has to be proven guilty first and I don't know how far that because there is some kids that are saying no nothing ever happened but right. that's for them to decide but at the end of the day Penn State these these were 10 year old that's these were young young kids coming to this program at Penn State um, it's not what we're talking about football players that played for Penn State or anybody in the school but uh, it's going to have some, with the press coverage of this and, and the bigger the story of this, it will have an impact on the school. The damage control is going to be unbelievable that Penn State will have to do. Big impact? It's going to have a huge impact. And then also, you know, you've got the NCAA now that's going to give a ruling on the football program there. And in all honesty, if it comes out that he's guilty and this actually happened, I mean, I can't see why they wouldn't get the same penalty SMU got for their recruiting schemes that they did right. in the past. Because I think this is way different than giving kids money to play football. This is... <laughs> Absolutely brutal. So they might even get the death penalty from the NCAA. A lot so. of people are saying they shouldn't even finish the year. What do you think? Well, you, you know what? How do you penalize a whole football team 
for uh, for something that wasn't related to the football team, other than it was an assistant coach, and you move him off into it, it, what he did was sick, twisted. And if he did this, uh, I'd castrate him. I mean, personally, well, I would. Yeah. I mean, I, if he did this, I would. I mean, this, that's sick. You can touch a child, you're a sick person. Right. But he hasn't been proven guilty yet, and he yes, has his day in court, right. so I am about that. But as far as the football team, you brought in scholarships, uh, the money that's involved in this, what is a priority? And that's going to be a big thing for Penn State, NCAA. What is more, of what's, what's more important? The reputation and dealing with this right and sitting out a whole season might be the way to go. Well, time will tell, right? So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see. see. Moving on, Miller time is what I call this one. Oh, now, Daddy, I know I like that you want to talk about this, Brian. The hit on Ryan Miller, uh, Milan Lucic, Ran Ryan Miller on Saturday night's game, and it's reported now that Miller received a concussion from that hit or some point during that game. Now, no suspension for Lucic. What do you think about that? Daddy gets to go at this one first because he thinks Miller's the best goalie in the league, so now we're going to have to questionable. He's, yeah. he's oh, he's a real winner this year. He's definitely not the best goalie Bite this year, but when, you, when you're the Buffalo Sabres and you have an asset like Ryan Miller and he gets ran by a guy like Lucic, Gostad, somebody, anybody's got to step up. No one did. Shanahan did not suspend him, which I think is brutal. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Brutal. It does nothing big but two or three games. What's going to happen now in Tim Thomas, who comes out of the crease all the time, and they're playing somebody like the Penguins and Goddard or Steve McIntyre decides he wants to run Tim Thomas? It'll be tough as in the American League right now. Well, <laughs> what if they bring him up? Well, at the end of the day, I, I, I'm not disagreeing. I mean, yeah. it doesn't matter who it is. Um, although on the same topic, you, you know, this one in particular, Judge Shanny, you should have suspended him two games. This was one that could have been avoided. He didn't make any effort he to get out of the way. He didn't at all. Like he and ran. he basically stood there like, if you watch, I like watching the body language of Luchik afterwards because he's one of my favorite players to watch. He's kind of like, bring it on. Yep. And like no he, one did. And nobody That's did. That's the worst and, part and about that, this. And it really was. But, you know, Shanny on that one, uh, this was a goalie who came out of his crease. And quite frankly, we were talking earlier. I think if a guy gets pushed or bumped into a goaltender, there shouldn't be a call. Okay. Um, because he's out. He's way past. I think a goaltender should be pre protected in his tri tripod area, whatever the hell, behind the nets. Right. I think he should be protected because it's a vulnerable spot. Hit your head against the boards like we've seen. But in the middle of the ice, you're an actual player. You're participating in potentially making a play that could win a, be a game-winning goal. The way these goalies pass the puck nowadays. So if I bump into you, bump. I'm not saying run bump into you and you do the old ooh, stick up in the air. Right. No, no, no suspension. This one, though, long story short, Shannon, two games, you should have given it to him. He set a bad precedence. All right, well, we got to wrap for now. But I think we'll come back and maybe talk a little bit more about this one after the break because there's more. Gloves are off. Coming up, stay tuned.